What's up everybody, Rob Ferretti here, and I am going to make the, uh, the hardest video I've, I've ever made. And it's going to be one continuous take, and I'm, I'm gonna just give it to you uh, the, the way you're gonna get it. So, um, two days ago, uh, my podcast co-host and one of my best friends, Tiara, uh, Van working over is Tiara Brianna, uh, was in a car accident and passed away. And uh, I'm gonna divide this amongst fact and speculation. And uh, I've obviously gotta let you guys know. I mean, you've seen her on the channel, you've seen her in videos, you've seen her on the podcast, and that gave you a chance to get to know her a little bit. And I think it's appropriate that I share this one, share this with everybody and at least set the record straight as to uh, what we know, what we don't know, and uh, what lessons can be learned from, from this. Uh, so uh, she was driving uh, my green uh, Lamborghini Huracan Spider that her friend rented. Uh, they were going to a Halloween party in the city and they uh, were on their way home and she was driving because they were staying at her apartment in North Bergen and uh, on their way home they were t-boned by another car and uh, the Lamborghini caught fire uh, the passenger was able to be extracted from the car and uh, Tiara wasn't so um, so So anyway, uh, so uh, what we know, uh, she was coming home uh, and what the accident report says, and we'll stick to what it says, not what actually transpired because we don't actually know everything yet. Uh, it appears that she was getting off an exit uh, onto 1 and 9 off of 495 and uh, attempting a U-turn is what the accident report said with the other driver stated. And as she was attempting the U-turn, the other driver came, uh, struck her car, pushed both cars across the lanes, uh, at which point the Lamborghini caught fire. Um, I, I have to look up his name. I'll, I'll put it overlaid or I'll put it in the description because uh, somebody that was driving by uh, and saw the accident or showed up shortly thereafter, uh, saw the car on fire and uh, went to go help and uh, pulled Madison, who was the uh, passenger, out of the car and saved her life because uh, she had a fractured hip and or fractured pelvis and she had a cut on her head, so she's going to be okay. Um, but without him pulling her out, there's a good chance at the rate that the fire consumed the car that she would not have made it out of the car. So uh, we do have that bright spot and it does highlight the type of person that th there are different types of people out there. There's people that sort of run to the fire to help and then there's people that just stand back and say, well, I hope nobody's in there. And um, this guy did what he can and uh, he saved one person and then that I do believe that she owes her life to him and that's uh, that's very important so I can tell you and, and I've seen cars catch fire and burn down and they don't generally just explode um, it's just not how cars work they don't just spontaneously combust if they're on fire long enough uh, occasionally uh, some pressurized stuff will, will blow up but if you see a car on fire initially and you can do something to help if you have a fire extinguisher or whatever um, or get in there, uh, you do generally have some time to, to try to help. The uh, accident itself, uh, if the police report is accurate and that she was doing a U-turn there, which um, I, I have no reason to now dispute the, the police report at this time, but uh, there are security cameras on the building, so uh, if the investigation goes further, we'll find out, but that's not going to change the outcome of anything. Um, it's pretty final. Uh, but 
uh, we can take some lessons from this, if that was the case, if, if she was making a U-turn. And logically, it may make sense. Um, the exit that she was doing a U-turn from would be an exit beyond where she would normally get off uh, to take Tunnelly Avenue or Route 1 and 9 north to where she lived. Uh, she, was, she came around the Cloverleaf and was facing southbound, so she did have to go north. There are turnarounds on that road every three quarters of a mile or so. So I can't imagine, and she lived down there, so I can't imagine that um, it would be something where she would decide to do a U-turn there. But if she did, um, it, was a, it was a bad judgment call, unfortunately. And uh, that has consequences, uh, which, which can be bad. And that, that's going to be the lesson that everybody has to take away from this, that if you do something to save two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes of your life, uh, that could end very badly. And that's something that I try to instill in people. I, I understand that as a car community, a lot of us treat the world as a racetrack, right? It's, there are gorgeous roads out there, um, but there are risks worth taking and risks not worth taking. And driving down the road at 150 miles an hour on an empty highway, you understand what can happen, right? An animal could jump out, a tire could explode. Anything could happen at that moment. You're understanding that risk. It's when you're taking risks beyond that, driving a car to 10 tenths on the road, that leaves you zero margin for error, right? So say you're driving 10 tenths, you're going through a turn, the road is uneven, you hit a pothole, an animal jumps out, there's nowhere to go. It's either pass or fail at that point in time. So that I always tell people to not drive to that extent. Um, the main reason I'm bringing up the details of the accident here, and I'm not going to be posting any photos or videos or anything of that, um, the main reason I'm bringing that up is so that the, the natural inc inclination, everyone's going to say, young girl driving Lamborghini must have been driving too fast, must have done this. Uh, I can assure you that that was not the case here. Uh, she's a good driver and uh, she may have made a, a bad decision to do a U-turn here. I've heard different stories so that the stuff that I know is what I'm telling you, but uh, somebody did say that they didn't think she was doing a U-turn. The guy who was the one who ended up saving uh, the other girls was behind them. Um, or uh, somebody said that it's a common place to do a U-turn and, and somebody was waving them on. And that's a situation I've seen this before where somebody's waving somebody through like, oh yeah, yeah you can go ahead of me. But that to people that registers is like, go ahead, you're clear. So they don't look. Uh, always look where you're going. Like if somebody says, go ahead, that means they're stopping. That doesn't mean traffic is coming the other way. I've seen this a lot with stop traffic where somebody leaves a gap and waves and says, go ahead. And somebody just sort of goes, all right. But that doesn't mean traffic. If your traffic is stopped here, you can't see what's coming in that direction. And um, this is a scenario, if that was the case, that, uh, that the worst case actually happened. I've seen this on rallies where people are passing on blind turns on double yellows and same thing, uh, that there is zero, and, and these rallies are famous for this, right? Like it's, you're, you're doing stuff and taking risks that are absolutely unnecessary uh, for nothing, right? Like you're not getting a trophy, like even if you get a trophy, buy yourself a trophy, it doesn't get you anywhere. These small decisions that we make, and I, I've tried to always explain this to people, the, the time savings that you're going to get to save five minutes, right? Versus the risk of, of doing that maneuver. Like, you know, when you're going down the highway and you're like, all right, we got to commit to this. And you pass between the truck and the car and you dip in and everyone's like, oh, holy crap, that guy's out of his mind. That move, if you misjudge that, you're hitting somebody, you're hitting, you're, you're hitting a truck. There is no upside to that. What do you do? You save 30 seconds by hitting the brake and then having to go around the truck or something like that at the next pass. Always, I want you to think about, um, Tierra, when, when you do something like that, like the, this passing on a, a double yellow line to be like, oh, the next passing zone is not for a couple of miles. Let me sneak this one out. You're not clairvoyant, right? You can't see around that turn. And, and by saying, I'll just go faster to spend less time on the wrong side of the road, isn't the correct approach, right? Because if something goes wrong, it's going to end badly for you and end badly for whoever you crash into. Whether you crash into somebody, you go careening off the road to avoid them, they go careening off the road. None of that is worth, it, it's a life-altering event to do that 
and none of that is worth that extra risk. Like I get it, we drive fast. Like everybody in the car community tends to go out and, and likes to do their Sunday drive or likes to go drive through the mountains or go, go enjoy themselves. But when you're blasting past other cars at, and I, I've even tried explaining this in the desert, when you're passing other cars, you can't just go flat out past a line of cars, right? Because somebody will look in their mirror like, all right, it's clear for me to pass this slower vehicle in front. There's a line of cars. They look in their mirror, you're not there. But if you're doing triple the speed limit, if you're doing 190 passing a cluster of cars, there is a good chance that this car may pull out because it was clear when he looked, now he's looking back to go out, there is a good chance you will not be able to stop. And that is why you have to calculate your driving. And I'm not saying don't enjoy your cars, don't enjoy the roads, don't enjoy life. Uh, but think about that marginal risk of those maneuvers that are potentially riskier, where the other side of that risk is, is a very, very bad outcome. Um, Tiara, I, I, as I said, she was, <laughs> she was, she was a phenomenal person. I, I couldn't, um, I couldn't pull together the, uh, the wherewithal to, to put a nice, uh, tribute piece together at the moment, but, uh, you'll see her in, in other videos that have already been shot. That'll, that'll hit the channel over the next months and, and whatever, um, it's it's tough to the, the words she she's impacted a lot of people's lives she was just such a, a great person a great energy she lit up the room when any whenever anyone was around and um i just want you to think about that as you're driving and as you're doing something uh that you don't want to create another situation like that the the idea that somebody is is unfortunately going to have to uh, essentially bury their child before them is so heartbreaking. She's got four younger sisters who loved her. She loved them. And, uh, and it's just such a tragic situation that I, I'm hoping um, wasn't something that could have been avoided from, from a judgment call. Uh, as I said, we're going to, when more details come out eventually, we'll know. But right now, um, the, the outcome is going to be the same. And we can only take lessons from this. And um, I just wanted to get out and, and prevent misinformation from getting out there. Uh, Instagram seems to have um, lots of people supporting her and, and, and sharing uh, lots of stories and posts and, and everything like that. I posted it on my Instagram uh, shortly after it happened. But uh, I knew this video was going to have to come at some point in time. And uh, I figured before people start coming up with ideas or saying something happened because a lot of people tend to believe the first thing they hear. I wanted to get out with, uh, with what actually happened and uh, just let everybody know. Um, if you were impacted by her, if you, if you just want to support the family, uh, I, I'll put a GoFundMe link in the, um, in the description and feel free to support her and, and her family because this is never easy. And uh, I want to do everything I can to, to help her memory live on and to uh, help the family at this time. So there you go. Um, lesson learned uh, by everybody, not, not necessarily. Um, every time something happens, there, there is something to be learned, right? You can get angry. Uh, you can be sad. It is sad. You can be angry, but it's never going to change the outcome. The only thing we can do is then learn that lesson from that and, and hopefully keep other people safe in the future. And if that means somebody's life is going to be saved by, by you know what, let me hit the brakes instead of the gas in this situation, um, then she did not die in vain. Uh, I, I don't know why uh, the Lamborghini uh, caught fire. Uh, I, I feel like it's it's more common than it should be that uh, I it seemed to see a lot of Lamborghinis that get involved in accidents catch fire or just catch fire by themselves. I don't know if it's a design flaw. I, I, I can't be the angry guy, uh, like upset at a manufacturer at the moment, but uh, I'm sure they'll dig into the cause of it. But uh, a standard auto accident where the car gets hit, and according to the police report, and like by the front headlight, 
should not essentially cause a car to spontaneously combust that literally has been running for about 12 minutes that she left uh, her dinner and it, she lives just on the other side as she was in right outside the Lincoln Tunnel. So the car was operating for about 12 minutes and it shouldn't get, it's not, this is not track use. It was raining and she was in traffic. Uh, that car should not get to a point where it is anything combustible uh, because of an impact from another car. So uh, thank, thanks for watching. Uh, please, uh, if you can show some support, uh, share some love in the comments and thank you for your time. I'll try to resume regularly scheduled programming uh, later this week, maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, I'll try to get back to as close to the new normal as we can. Uh, I appreciate you guys and see you, see you next time.